Hello and welcome to another tutorial on how to make a game in XNA. And uh, sorry guys, I apologize that I did not make a tutorial this last Friday. Uh, I was on spring break and yeah, I was just enjoying myself and I completely forgot about making a tutorial. So yeah, and the reason why I'm doing it now, probably going to release it on t this Tuesday. Uh, is because Monday I had stuff too and on the weekend of course was Easter so yeah so I'll make two tutorials one uh, one whenever I can as soon as possible and then next one is gonna be on Friday like normal uh, okay but on to the game now I think this game's gotten to a point pretty much where we just have to do we got the engine down mostly and we just need uh, features to add so if you guys want to add a feature if you think it's cool or something like that uh, just leave in the comments below and if I think it's cool too I'll add it probably so yeah uh, looks like we have an error in our object class and in this collision method <laughs> and we have to return a new object except it's missing a method I'm gonna miss, missing an argument, and I believe it's yeah vector two. Okay, so new vector two. Oops, or we can just do vector two dot zero because I don't think it matters where we're, where uh this vector what this vector is. So, uh, someone suggested that I build the game at the end of each episode, and post the source code and that's a pretty good idea I'm probably going to build the run the game at the end of each episode but I'm probably not going to release the source code uh, and the reason being is because I don't want people just copying all the code and yeah just seeing if it works because then you're not learning anything you're just copying and pasting and that's that's sort of that's not the point so uh, I would encourage you to look at what I've been doing in the tutorials and then you don't have to copy the code exactly but you could do something similar or you could copy it copy it make some of your own changes and if you get stuck somewhere uh, not to like rewind the video keep watching I mean you can do that too that's very helpful but don't do it just to try to copy the code and see if he got it exactly matching. That's not how you fix an error. You have to actually go look at the error report, which should be down here, and go see what's wrong and go try to fix it and see like what's causing the error and what's the best fix. So if you can do that, you're, you're definitely learning, learning. So yeah, those are just some comments I had. Uh, we were building a map maker, I believe, so yeah okay so we got our map maker component okay yeah actually you know if we're gonna make a map maker component we need to make a menu component so this will be the menu for our game so just click add and uh, this menu will be able to change the game state and I'll just say menu component I'm not sure how to spell that that's fine okay and I'm just gonna go ahead and copy most of oh, what the heck is this oh, this this is not the right one okay oops that was from another game okay I'm just gonna copy uh, this map maker class pretty much uh, and then just edit out some things so I'm gonna get rid of these keyboard events oh we need a get all the goodies oh you know what we don't need this either and I don't think we need this so yeah don't worry guys if you don't recognize those those are from a different game I was just looking back to see what I did on different games so I can get an idea of what I'm going to want to do now so yeah that's pretty much it uh, change this to menu component and selected equals zero that's fine uh, 
Oh, actually, when we we want to keep the keyboard events, get rid of the mouse. Actually, we can just keep them in there. Uh, yeah, that's good. Okay, update, check mouse. Okay, that's all we need pretty much. Uh, HUD, draw objects. Actually, the only thing is we want to get rid of this right here, and we're gonna add a sprite. Sprite font, uh, sprite font, and this will be the font for, yeah, this will be the font for our text that will go on our menu, and we're going to have the font or the text centered in the center of the screen, so, yeah, so in our load content method, just say sprite font equals content dot load texture oops sprite font and let's see what sprite fonts do we have okay well I made a HUD font right here you might have a different font if you don't have a have a sprite font uh, you can go right click on the project go to add a uh, new item and then there should be an option to add a sprite font somewhere here. Okay, that's pretty much it. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm just gonna add a sprite font. What do I call it again? HUD font. HUD font. Okay, so now we have our sprite font. We want to draw the selected text. Uh, and to do that, we're going to make an array. Uh, or list actually yeah a list might be better so I'm gonna make a list and it's gonna be a list of strings and I'm gonna call this uh, button list equals new list okay uh, I'm sure you guys are familiar with list if you're not it's basically like an array but you can keep adding new items and you don't have to declare uh, a size a set amount of size you can keep adding to it and stuff like that and what it'll do is like redimension the that array so yeah we create a button list and you know I'm just gonna add uh, the button list thing or add all the buttons in the constructor because that seems like the easiest thing to do so button list dot add and what we're gonna do here is add all the buttons we want to add to our menu. So, for example, the play button, uh, and quit, or exit. And then maybe we want a controls button, and we also wanna make a button for us, just for debugging purposes. Or I mean, not debugging purposes, but uh, to be able to create the game, we're going to make a map maker button. So each of these will change the game state of the game and will update a different uh, game component. So yeah, that's pretty much how this is going to work. And you see this integer right here, selected, is going to tell us which button, button is selected right now because we're not actually going to click on these buttons. What's going to happen is we're going to uh, press the up and down arrows on a keyboard to make uh, our highlighted spot go up and down and that's how we're going to control it so in our update method so we can say like if we should make another method called check keyboard Okay, there we go. So just so it's easier for us to add to check keyboard events. Okay. So, oops, not left button. I'm just gonna redo all this. Okay, keyboard dot is key down. And we want to check for uh, a certain key, so we have to pa pass in a variable. I mean, an argument called keys. 
I mean called key and then we'll just put the key in there so if this key is pressed and the pre and that same key was not pressed uh, in the past in the past uh, frame so that's our check keyboard method so I'm gonna say if check keyboard keys dot up and if check keyboard keys dot down so this will basically just check if we're pressing the up and down uh, arrow keys and it looks like we're running out of time so uh, I guess I'll see you in the next tutorial. Okay, thank you.